All right, so let's go ahead and test our program to see where it's at, right? If we leave it the way it is, uh, nothing happens, right? Because we have, we've only defined functions, we need to call the main function. That's where our program really starts. The main function is the function that calls every other function. So let, we have to call the main function to, for really anything to happen. First of all, let's save this file. Oops, I'm going to I'm, well, I'm going to try to run it. And let's save this. All right, so I'm going to go to where we save all our Python programs. So it's going to be right here. Program challenges, chapter six. And let's call this random number file writer. All right, so I'm going to create a new folder for this. I'm going to call it random number file writer. So that's a new folder. I'm going to also create this file or save this file as random number file writer.py. Save it here. The program is running. It's now here, right? That means it hasn't gotten to the line where the file is going to be created. First of all, the file doesn't exist. Now, I, had to, I have to mention something. Notice over here that I specify the name of the file without typing any path. I just typed in the name of the file. I have already saved the, the, this program here. And let's just go here for a second. Let's go to the location of the, of the file. So chapter 6, random number. Oops, I didn't, I didn't save it in the folder. All right, so let me drag it in here. Let me see what happens if I save this. I don't know if it's going to save it outside again. Let's see. And it it didn't. All right, so let's see. Oops, yeah, now it's gone, right? Because I moved it. All right, so you know what? <laughs> I'm going to save this as. Hold on. Let's just let, let's let me let me just <laughs> let me paste this here. Control Option V, I believe. All right. All right, so I'm going to first of all save this as. Is there a save as? Yes, save as. But I'm this time I'm going to save it in the the, the right folder. And then let me go ahead and delete the other one here. All right, so we have this now. Good. All right, so if I go to the location of this, okay, the, this file, it's it's stored here, right? But over here, notice that when I was opening the file, I haven't created here. Created here, the program is still running, but it's running from here, right? Like if I stop it and run it again, it's it's we are here basically. It's waiting for the user to type in something. Notice over here, I just typed in the name of the file without any path. Now, if this file is is going to is is, is to be created, if, if this file is created, it will be saved in the same location as where I saved the file. Sorry, as where I saved the the program itself which is here. If this file is created, it will be saved here because I didn't specify any path. If you don't specify any path, then this, this file over here is going to be created in the same location as the program, the .py the .py file, okay, the program itself. If you, if you save this, this, if you want to save this file somewhere else, okay, or if you want to access this file from somewhere else, you have to specify the path, okay, to where you want to save it or where you want to access, access it from. Okay, but you have to tell the program where, where the file is, okay, where, where you want to access the file from or where you want to create the file. Okay, for the program to be able to kind of interact with this file. But if you save this file in the same location as where the program is, then you don't have to specify the path. And in that case, when you're in the same location, they'll be able to see each other and, and they'll be able to work with each other. So, so there won't be, able, don't be any, any problems. All right, so we are running it. How many numbers should the random file hold? I'm going to type in five and hit enter. Okay, nothing happens. We don't see anything happen. I, I hit enter. But this program accepted my the number five. It went ahead to create the file. When we go to the location, we'll see the file there. It basically went through the file. Like it went through how many, it basically created a, a loop that I traced five times and then printed five random numbers in a range of 1 through 500 in there, right? So let's go check to see if the file is created. If we go to the location, we can see the file has been created. Random numbers.txt has been created over here in this same location. When I open it and I preview it, we can see there are some numbers in there, right? But then they are not displayed in the way we have to dis we, we want to display it. That's because file to be written the right will basically print writes the number to the file, and then the position will be right at the end of that number. 
any number that comes after will be will continue from that same number going so it prints a number let me use the comments to explain this it will print a number let's say 55 and then it will wait the position will be right there if i print another number the loop will iterate again if it prints another number let's say 78 it will print 78 if print another number, let's say 230, it will print 230. So that's why we are seeing it that, that way. So anytime we print a number, let's go ahead and add a new line character to it, right? Let's concatenate a new line character, backslash n, to it. We are adding a new line character. What a new line character does is, now let's go back to this example again. It prints a first number, and then it concatenates it, adds a new line character to it, meaning that the new line character will basically move the, the position from where it's at to the next line. So I'm going to hit enter here. Right, it moves the position from where it's at here to the next line. And anything that comes after it will be displayed from that next line going, from this next line going. So when the loop iterates again and prints another random number, it's going to be it's going to continue from here. Let's say 78. And then 78 is going to be concatenated with a new line character. The new, the new line character will basically move the position from where it's at to the next line. And the loop will iterate again. Another number will be written, let's say 230. And the new line character will be concat sorry, the 230 will be concatenated with a new line character, and then the new line character will move the position from where it's at to the next line, so on and so forth. So that's why we, so we weren't seeing it this way because we weren't concatenating it with a new line character, but now we have, right? So let me delete this comment and then let's run this again and let's see now how it looks. How many numbers should the file hold? I'm going to type in let's say six this time around, six and hit enter. Nothing happens in, the, in our output because we haven't coded anything to happen. But when we go to our file, we can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And these, all, these numbers are all in the range of 1 to 500, right? We are not, we are, basically, we're done, right? But then let's touch, out, uh, touch up our program, make it look nice and pretty. All right, so it's nice to have like an, a message at the end of the program that says, oh, all files have been written, right? But before we do any of that, let's handle exceptions exceptions are basically potential errors errors that can be thrown as a result of this program right now if i let's stop this and i'll let me run this again if i run this program a, a user can type in the, the number six right how many numbers should a random file hold right the user can type in six and that's a problem because we are converting whatever the user has typed to an integer how is it going to convert six to an integer that's going to give you and give you an error so when i stop this and i run this and I type in, or let, me type, let me type in six this time, and hit enter. We have an exception thrown. But the user doesn't see this here. Let me just go ahead and close it. All the user sees is a crash program. The program will crash in front of the user, and that's not good for us. So when we go to exceptions, an exception has been thrown, which means an error has occurred, right? And we can handle that. We can see over here, it says invalid literal for int with base 10, 6, right? That's an invalid literal. Okay, for, for int, it wants you to type in an int and you type in an invalid invalid value or invalid literal. So let's go ahead and handle that. We can handle errors like that with a try accept statement. So I'm going to try, let me wrap the try statement clause around this. I'm going to try, okay, with a colon, to run any statement that has the potential to cause an error. Well, I know this has the potential to cause an error if the user types in 6, for example. So that's going to go under my try. I know this line also has the potential to cause an error. For example, if there's a problem right into the, if there's a problem opening this file. So I'm going to also put it in my try. And I'm going to have an accept clause here. Okay, and I'll, I'll explain this in a second. And I'm going to print a statement saying that an error has occurred. Now, we'll, we'll get through this. There's a couple of things we need to do, so bear with me here. I don't know if that's how to spell it here. The double, double R or one R. Okay. So let's see if this helps. So what I'm trying to say is try to run this program. Oh, sorry, try to, or try to run this code, this, these, co this, these lines of code, of code. But when you phase an exception, right, when you, when, you, when you phase an exception, stop everything and print out the message an error has occurred. And then continue with the code below it. All right, so let's see how this works so far. When I run this and I type in six, first of all, it says an error as a kid, but I want the program to stop right there. I want it to stop right there. But it printed an error as a kid, right? It stopped everything, printed an error as a kid, and continue here. 
but we face another error here because it says local variable number of random numbers reference before assignment. That means that this random number, random num random number of random numbers doesn't doesn't store anything, right? Because the user was wasn't able to store an, a valid number in this. So it's saying that we are using it without without assigning it anything. We we are referencing it. We are using it without assigning um, assigning it anything. There's nothing assigned to it. But when I face this error, I want the program to halt and stop completely. Display this error to the, to the user and then stop the program, right? So I'm going to use an else clause here, right? And I'll explain the else clause in a moment. And I'm going to wrap this, uh, basically move this under the else. And I'll explain now the, the entire code. I'm saying try to run this code, right? But when you face an exception, stop everything here and print out this message. And then you're done. But if you don't face an exception, okay, if you try to write this code and you don't face an exception, then run this code. Okay, again, try to run this code. Okay, but if you face an exception, print this code and you're done. But if you don't face an exception, else, okay, else if you don't face an exception, then run this code. If you don't face an exception, that means everything is fine. Now we, we can go ahead with our, with our code. But if you face an exception, run this code and, and you're done. Nothing else runs. So when I run this program and I type in six, it says an, an error occurred, and we're done. But if I run this, this program and I type in five and I hit enter, program is done, right? We don't really see any output, right? And we'll handle that in a moment. So five numbers, let's see in our file. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. All right. Couple more things. I'm going to add another clause to it. You know, I'm going to add another clause. It's called finally, and I'll explain that in a second. Finally, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and close. And I'll. We'll talk, we're not done with the try except We'll talk more about it. But finally, I want to, and I'll explain what finally does in a moment. Finally, let's go ahead and close the file all right let's go ahead and close the file to be written to so file to be written to dot close then let's also display a message saying that um let's see let's see let's see let's let's display a message saying that end of file let's for now let's just say end of end of program all right so finally we'll run regardless of what happens here it will run regardless of what happens here if there is an exception finally will run okay the code under finally will run if there is an exception and the program runs fine if the else part runs the else part will run all right and finally will run so finally will run regardless of whatever happens here it doesn't care what's going on here finally will will we'll take care of everything that happens all right so now there's a problem here if we run the program right and we type in the number five there are no problem i hit enter it says end of program right finally run it, tr it tried to run the code. It was able to assign file to random numbers. Sorry, number of number of random numbers. The file was created. There was no exception, so this part didn't run, right? So because there was no exception, the else part run. Else will run if there's there's no exception, right? So you can read it as else if there's no exception, run this code. So you run this code. It printed the file, the number, the numbers to the file, and it finally will run regardless. Finally will run regardless of whatever happens here, whether an exception occurs or not. So finally, close the file and then print it. End of program. Let's try the other way around and type in a value like six. Now six, we are we are going to run this program. There's going to be an error thrown, right? So because there's an exception, an error has occurred will be printed. The else part won't run because there's an exception here. But finally, we'll run. However, finally, we'll try to to again. Finally, we'll run regardless of whatever happens here. Finally, we'll run. The else part won't run because there's an exception. If there's an exception, it prints this message, and the else part won't run. It jumps to finally. Finally, we'll try to close the file and then print end of program. When I hit enter, we have an error. It's saying that file to be written to is referenced before assignment. So because it wasn't able to store, you know, because it wasn't able to store six in one number of, number of random numbers, there's an error here. There's an error right here. So it didn't even get to this line here it didn't get to this line it, it it didn't create the file in the first place so this file to be written to contains nothing 
So the same thing it's saying here, it's saying like like the same thing we had with, like with the previous previous problem. It's saying that the local variable file to be written to ref, ref, is a reference before assignment, meaning we are using it with, with nothing stored in there. We haven't assigned anything to it, but we are referring to it. We are using it. We, we, there's nothing stored in it in there because there was an error here and the, the program didn't even get to this line. As soon as it got to this problem, there was an exception. So it jumped to the exception, printed, a, printed an error has occurred. The else part didn't run. Finally, finally run. It tried to close the file, but again, fun, file to be print, written to hasn't been assigned anything. There's nothing in there. So we want to make sure that regardless of what happens, we want to create open the file first. And I hope you're following along here. We want to open the file first, so at least we have a file open. So when we are closing the file at the end of end of the program, whether we have an exception or not, it wouldn't have a problem. So let's do the same thing again now. Run it. I'm going to type in six. Hit enter. It says an error as a kid end of program. So what happened was we tried to run the file. First of all, the first thing I did was try to create a file called random numbers of txt. So this file has been created. This variable is referring to the file. We have it stored in here already. It tries to assign the number six here. There is a problem, right? Because you can't convert this string six to an int. So because it's an exception, it jumps to the accept clause and it prints a message, print an, um, an error as occurred. The else part will run. The else part will only run if there is no exception and everything is fine. So because it's an exception, the else part won't run. It, it prints what's in an exception and jumps straight to finally because finally again runs regardless of whatever happens here, whether it's an exception or not. And so it tries to close the file. Now, because the file has been created already and file to be written to has something stored in there, it, it, it has the memory address of the file, we can go ahead and close it and we can print end of program. And that's why we see this happening. All right? So now regardless of whatever we, whatever we type, we can see, we can see that happening.